the previous video, we learned about motivic development and cadences, and this led to the composition of a musical phrase. In this lesson, we will take the musical phrase and expand that out into three different types of small form. The parallel period form, the contrasting period form, and the double period form. All period forms have a question and answer type of structure, where the first phrase consists of a question and the second phrase consists of the answer to that question. The question phrase is known as the antecedent phrase, and the answer phrase is known as the consequent phrase. A question, by definition, leaves something unresolved, therefore needing an answer. For our first phrase, the easiest way to leave it unresolved is to end with a half cadence, a five chord. For our second phrase, the easiest way to end it resolved, and therefore as an answer, is to end with an authentic cadence, five followed by one. Now let's explore the three types of period forms by using the musical phrase that was composed in our last video. Let's develop this phrase into a parallel period form. In a parallel period form, the two phrases can be almost identical, and in many compositions they are. They can also be very similar. So to begin to develop our parallel period, I will rewrite this as our second phrase. Now here we have two identical musical phrases, and together they make up a perfectly acceptable musical form. However, they are not a period form. Notice that the end of each phrase is a 5 to a 1. This is what we need for the end of the second phrase, the answer or consequent phrase. However, the first phrase needs to end with a 5, a half kins. So we need to modify the end of this phrase so that it ends with a 5. The simplest way to do this would be to add a 5 chord here in the second half of the measure. We would also need to add one additional note in the melody since the C whole note will not work against the G major chord. I can make this C a half note and add a B or a D to the melody against the G chord. Now this will feel like a question phrase followed by an answer phrase. This is again a parallel period because the two phrases are very similar to one another. Now let's explore the contrasting period form. In a contrasting period form, the second phrase is significantly different than the first phrase. The easiest way to do this is to base the new phrase on a different motive than the first phrase. Another way to go about it is to take a motivic idea from the first phrase and develop it into a completely new idea using our ideas of motivic development. You could start with a new chord progression in the same key and then compose a new motive and develop that new motive into a new musical phrase. Now we have a contrasting period form, where the antecedent phrase is significantly different from the consequent phrase. Again, period forms always have the feeling of a question at the end of the first phrase, followed by an answer at the end of the second phrase. The easiest way to have a question is with a half cadence, a five chord. The easiest way to have an answer is with an authentic cadence, five to one. Our final type of period form is known as a double period. This is a four phrase form that can easily be developed from a contrasting period. Here is the contrasting period that was composed in the previous slide. This first phrase, since it is the first phrase of the form, can be labeled with a small a. This second phrase, since it is a new idea, it can be labeled with a small b. The typical double period form will actually repeat these two phrases for another A and another B. However, what we have written here is simply two contrasting periods. Here is the first contrasting period, 
followed by the second contrasting period, and they happen to be identical. For this to be a double period, we need to have a feeling of a question at the end of the first, second, and third phrases, followed by an authentic cadence at the end. Again, the easiest way to ask a question in music is to end with a five. So here we have a question. On the second phrase, we do not have a question. We have an answer with the authentic cadence. I can add a five chord here at the end to provide that question. The third phrase ends with a five, so it is also a question. And then we have a nice answer with a five to one authentic cadence at the end. Now we have a double period form with the three questions followed by an answer. In terms of our diagramming of A, B, A, B phrases, this B is different from the first B, so we will call this B prime. To summarize, there are three types of period forms. The parallel period, which consists of two phrases, an A and A prime where the two phrases are very similar to each other, if not identical. The main difference is that the cadence, where the first phrase ends with a 5, a question, and the second phrase ends with an authentic cadence, an answer. The next type of period form is the contrasting period. In the contrasting period, we have an A phrase followed by a B phrase, and the two phrases are significantly different from one another. We still have the question and answer feel with the 5 chord at the end of the first phrase and the 5-1 at the end of the second phrase. The final type of period form is the double period form. This consists of four phrases, typically an A, B, A, B prime, where the first, second, and third phrases end as questions, and the final phrase ends as an answer.